The A380 once reigned supreme as the king of the skies, capturing the hearts of aviation enthusiasts around the world. However, its glorious reign was paused when it faced its greatest challenge, as airlines either stored it away or dismantled it, leaving fans wondering if they had seen the last of it. Surprisingly, there have been recent signs that it is making a comeback, reclaiming its once unique position. Why said it will be back, and how good is this iconic plane to be loved by its fans? Did the A380 truly succeed? Let's find out after this. For decades, the Boeing 747 was the only super jumbo in the sky, achieving remarkable success since its debut in the 1970s. Uh, to compete, Airbus, following the success of the A320, was determined to develop a rival larger than the Queen. Despite the enormous costs associated with building a super jumbo, Airbus introduced the A380, the largest passenger aircraft in the world, featuring a complete two-deck design. The A380 surpassed the Queen in passenger capacity, accommodating 525 passengers in a typical configuration, and up to 853 when optimizing seating. Like the 747 it emulates, the A380 is powered by four. Alliance GP7200 or Rolls-Royce Trent 900 engines, each generating 70,000 pounds of thrust, allowing it to fly distances of up to 8,000 nautical miles. This colossal aircraft took its first flight in April 2005 and officially entered service with Singapore Airlines in October 2007. The Airbus aircraft not only exceeds the 747 in passenger capacity and range, but also outperforms it in efficiency, consuming 20% less fuel per seat. Airbus created a worthy response to the 747, marking a new turning point in the aviation industry. The greatest success of the A380 may well be its achievement of becoming the largest passenger aircraft, surpassing the 747 in capacity and gaining love from travelers, earning its title as the king of the skies. However, from a commercial standpoint, Airbus did not achieve profitability after investing $25 billion in the development of this aircraft. As a result, in 2021, the European manufacturer announced it would cease production of the giant aircraft. Several reasons contribute to this decision. Do you agree with this? If not, what do you think is its greatest success? First and foremost, one of the key reasons for the King's lack of success is its excessively high fuel consumption. Its four engines, while efficient, must power such a large aircraft, leading to an average fuel consumption of 11,400 liters per hour. This substantial fuel cost can become a financial burden for airlines, particularly when fuel prices rise. Furthermore, maintaining four engines along with other large components is both costly and complex, requiring additional manpower and increasing labor costs. The A380 can only be profitable if it consistently achieves high load factors with 525 passengers, a feat not many airlines can guarantee. Secondly, in addition to its high operating costs, the enormous size of the A380 presents a disadvantage. With a wingspan of 80 meters and a length of 73 meters, it exceeds the limitations of many airports, especially smaller ones. This restricts its ability to land at airports with short runways or limited space. The large size of the A380 also contributes to increased emissions. While it is more efficient than the 747 in some respects, it still produces higher levels of carbon and nitrogen oxides compared to many other long-haul aircraft. Thirdly, the decline of the hub and spoke model due to certain disadvantages associated with operating in this way has led to a reduced demand for the King. Airbus's plan for this jumbo jet success relied partially on this model, where passengers were primarily transported to major hubs before being transferred to other destinations using smaller aircraft. Additionally, the emergence of modern, more fuel-efficient aircraft, such as the Airbus A350 and Boeing 787 Dreamliner, has contributed to this shift. These planes, which can carry around 300 passengers, have encouraged airlines to adopt a direct route model, allowing passengers to fly directly between two airports without stopping at a hub. As a result, in 2021, Airbus announced that they would stop producing A380 after 12 years in operation and only selling 254, compared with 1,200 in the initial plan. The Pandemic COVID-19 made the situation worse when flights paused and the passengers worried about flying on crowded aircraft. Many airlines quickly removed this super jumbo jet from their fleet, and on April the 20th, 20, Airbus officially stopped producing this aircraft, marking the end of an era. So, for a long time, many believed that it wouldn't appear in the sky anymore. 
However, on June 20th, 2023, Emirates surprisingly informed of its plan to upgrade 6A380 to operate again during the peak of summer. They recovered 11 of their A380, which not only resumed operations, but also featured modern cabins and enhancements. There is more surprising news regarding Lufthansa, an airline that had previously stated they wouldn't return to the A380. However, in the recovery program after the COVID-19 pandemic, this airline decided to lease five this aircraft again. Thanks to this, the number of this jumbo jet back in operation has increased to 20 aircraft, and many predict that this number will continue to grow in the future. Indeed, on April 6, 2024, the Airbus aircraft with registration number VHQHA, belonging to Qantas Airlines of Australia, implemented a flight lasting about 13 hours from Sydney to Los Angeles. This marked the first time Qantas returned the A380 to commercial service since the pandemic spread in 2020. Notably, this is not just any A380. It is the first one delivered to Qantas and the 14th one built in the world. With nearly 16.5 years in operation, VHQHA became the oldest active two-deck aircraft as all other jumbo jets have been decommissioned or stored. Before flying again, it was stored at an airport in the UAE in Abu Dhabi from November 20th, 22, where its cabin was upgraded. On April 4th, 2024, it completed a test flight that lasted 3.5 hours before returning to Australia for this historic flight. On June 13th, 2024, another aircraft belonging to Etihad Airways left its storage location at Teruel Airport in Spain after a long time, embarking on a six-hour flight back home to Abu Dhabi. There, it will undergo maintenance before returning to service. This is the fifth A380 that Etihad has brought back into operation since this aircraft resumed service on June the 20th, 23. It seems that there is a trend for airlines to operate this aircraft again. This is indeed a legendary aircraft that was loved, and of course, the news of its service return has delighted its fans. But why, when it seemed like its era was ending forever, did it make a comeback? Recently, several reasons have emerged for the A380's return and its renewed attention. First, its huge capacity is a significant advantage in situations where many flights are delayed as more seats allow for better service. As passenger numbers recover, the King could become an important part of aviation operations. Additionally, airlines have noticed that passengers are increasingly interested in this jumbo jet because it offers more space for families and groups of friends. Moreover, its return may also encourage airlines to invest in newer aircraft as maintaining older planes can be more expensive in the long run. Additionally, the A380 can still be used for major events such as sports or cultural festivals, including the World Cup and music festivals like Coachella, where famous artists like Taylor Swift perform. These events are expected to attract large numbers of tourists, creating demand for the A380, as airlines can organize special flights to transport festival attendees. In conclusion, despite facing many challenges in the past, the King has demonstrated impressive adaptability. Its revival is not only driven by market demand, but also depends on the creativity of airlines in harnessing its potential. This aircraft has the potential to once again become a significant part of the aviation industry, offering passengers an exceptional flying experience worldwide. The Airbus A380 and Boeing 747 are two iconic aircraft in the aviation industry, but each has followed a different fate, reflected in their design, versatility, and orders. While the Airbus huge aircraft surpassed the 747 in terms of performance, size, capacity, and even range, the number of aircraft delivered is the clearest demonstration of a plane's success. The A380, with a capacity of up to 853 passengers, is the largest aircraft in the world, offering a luxurious flying experience. However, its lack of flexibility in design made it less competitive compared to the Boeing aircraft. Although Airbus considered developing a cargo version, the A380F, the project was quickly cancelled due to high costs and complex technical requirements. Commercially, the King received 251 orders, mostly from major airlines like Emirates. However, declining demand led Airbus to cease production in 2021 as airlines shifted to smaller, more fuel-efficient aircraft like the A350 or Boeing 787. In contrast, the Boeing 747 has established itself as one of the most versatile aircraft lines. The latest version, the Dash 8, has been particularly successful in the cargo market with the 8 Freighter, which is optimized for freight transport. 
This versatility has helped her maintain its appeal even as airlines gradually phased out the passenger version. As a result, Boeing has delivered a total of 1,574 747, with 107 orders for the Dash 8 freighter. She has served not only in passenger transport, but also played a crucial role in the air cargo industry. Thus, while the King stands out for its size and capacity, the Queen leads in versatility and long-term significance, especially in the freight sector. Which do you think is the more successful plane? Leave your comments below. Thanks, and see you next time.